What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE pay-per-views that were legit curse. Uh, this is an interesting one. I want to see what they mean by legit curse. Maybe um, certain wrestlers were supposed to be on the show. Maybe they were injured or something happened where they weren't able to make the show or something just weird and freakishly, you know, abnormal went on during the show or before the show um so i want to check out what they mean by legit curse uh link to the original video will be down below this is uh brought to us by wrestlemania you know i've been subscribing them for quite some time so if you haven't already subscribed to them go ahead subscribe to them check them out but let's get right into this one <clears throat> appreciate all love and support let's do this damn thing and there are those WWE pay-per-view events that are known for all the wrong reasons. These pay-per-view events are known for either a ton of injuries taking place on yep. the show itself or real-world events quads. impacting WWE's plans for the show, so WWE are forced to improvise and put together a completely random pay-per-view. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE pay-per-view events that were cursed. Should be an interesting one, man. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, TLC 2017. Just two days before the 2017 TLC pay-per-view, WWE was sent into a tailspin when it was revealed that two of WWE's top stars, Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt, were pulled from the pay-per-view card due to a viral infection. This was problematic as Reigns was set to be in the main event teaming with the Shield teammates to take on The Miz, Braun Strowman, Kane and The Bar. In relation to Wyatt, he was supposed to take on the guise of Sister Abigail to take on the demon version of Finn Balor. The WWE deserves a ton this. of credit for how they handled oh, the setback. Yeah. Fans certainly got a treat with WWE's uh, alternative booking plan. Yeah, Reigns would be Angle. replaced by the legendary Kurt Angle, who would compete in his first WWE match since 2006. Mm -hmm. In relation to Balor, he would now wrestle SmackDown star AJ Styles in an acclaimed and certified dream match. WWE made the best out of a mm -hmm. bad situation, which can't be said for every pay-per-view. I, I forgot all about that. They, they, those were some nice switch-ups that actually worked <laughs> that's the crazy thing the switch-ups actually worked they were able to uh put on some pretty good matches despise two of their top guys being out so hey kudos to wwe for coming up with this on the fly and and being able to make the best out of that situation man and it still came out pretty well named in this list number nine survivor series war games 2022 the WWE debuted the War Games concept on the main roster in mm -hmm. 2022, and whilst the matches were well received, the match was responsible for a number of injuries. During the yeah. main event matchup, a WWE's top guy Roman Reigns heard his eardrum, and the exact same injury was suffered by Drew McIntyre. Another injury was suffered by Jimmy Uso, and it was believed he suffered a hand injury. Thankfully, none of the injuries mentioned were overly serious, yeah. but it highlighted how the War Games concept isn't for the faint of heart. Number eight, which is one of those things where it's, I, I I hope they bring that back. Um, Survivor Series War Games having that that be kind of the staple for for uh, Survivor Series at least going forward for now. You know, I, I I like that. I I truly enjoy that because Survivor Series the the brand warfare stuff doesn't really work because they still don't really truly. <laughs> respect the brand split <laughs> even now we see it people that shouldn't be popping up on certain shows still pop up regardless you know they don't really too much go by the brand split so for them to add war games to the show and maybe make that a, a annual thing for survivor series i'm all for it i am so all for it and it just shows how you know that environment can be uh pretty dangerous wrestlemania 32 a WrestleMania 32 was set to be a huge pay-per-view for WWE, but during the months leading up to the event, numerous top stars would get injured, which led to fans assuming that the pay-per-view event was doomed. This all began in November of 2015 oh, when reigning yeah. WWE Champion Whoa. Seth Rollins suffered a serious knee injury. 
This forced Rollins to surrender the WWE title and he would subsequently no longer factor into WrestleMania mm, 32 plans. Other injuries occurred to the likes of Randy Orton, Cesaro, Neville and Luke Harper, all of whom were set to be featured in roles on the grandest stage. One of the biggest injuries that doomed the event was to John Cena. Cena suffered a shoulder injury in January of 2016, which meant that he wouldn't be able to have a pre-advertised match upon the show. It was rumored at the time that WWE were planning a Cena vs Undertaker dream match, but this was eventually cancelled, and they went for a match between a returning Shane McMahon and oh, the Dead Man. It was also rumored that an That probably would have been better, potentially, and then what we ended up getting with uh, John Cena and The Undertaker afterwards. An ongoing back injury that Bray Wyatt was suffering from led to WWE changing his creative direction. Initial plans called him to face off against Brock Lesnar, but this was eventually changed to Lesnar vs Dean Ambrose, wow. where Wyatt would no longer have a featured match booked on the show. Instead, Wyatt would be involved in a segment with The Rock and John Cena, which eventually led to The Rock facing Wyatt family member Eric Rowan. Mm -hmm. Number 7, No Mercy 2007. And by October 2007, WWE's entire brand revolved around John Cena. Yep. That meant that if Cena went down with an injury, WWE went into panic mode as they truly relied on Cena to steer the ship. The original planned main event for No Mercy 2007 was a last man standing match between mm -hmm. WWE Champion Cena and Randy Orton. However, on the Raw before the pay-per-view, Cena suffered a right pectoral muscle tear, putting him on the shelf with immediate effect. This put WWE in a weird position, and they decided to book one of the most unusual pay-per-view events of all time. The pay-per-view itself opened up with Vince McMahon awarding Orton with the WWE title. Triple H would then interrupt and challenge yeah, Orton to an impromptu WWE title match, which the game won. Triple H's scheduled match with Umaga would now be for the WWE title, in which the game would once again come out victorious. The planned main event would swap out Cena in favor of the game and Orton would finally defeat Triple H in a last man standing match mm -hmm. to close out No Mercy 2007 with championship gold. Which is crazy, man. So crazy. Hey, man, that, that wasn't a bad time. Uh, I know some people kind of, you know, they have this mindset of that time period is where some fans, you know, kind of stepped away, um, mainly because of just how they was pushing John Cena. But I'm not going to lie to you. There were some good fat feuds, good matches. I remember this time period of wrestling for a little bit, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Yes, John Cena was heavily overpushed, but at the same time, he did give us some great match matches, classic feuds, and, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't knock him for that. Number 6, Royal Rumble 2023 Following the acclaimed Royal Rumble pay-per-view of 2023 coming off the air, numerous reports surfaced in relation to the sheer amount of injuries that had taken place at the event. The first report was that the Women's Royal Rumble winner Rhea Ripley had dislocated her knee in the match and had legitimately put it back into place in order to finish the match. Wow, I didn't Another retreat took place when Asuka kicked Sonya Deville right in the head and this meant that Deville needed medical assistance. Whoa, An injury also occurred. I didn't know that either. What the hell? The WWE producer Kenny Dykstra, who hurt his leg during the brawl between Edge and the Judgment Day faction. The final oh, injury damn. occurred to the Men's Royal Rumble winner Cody Rhodes, who hurt his eardrum during the Rumble match, but thankfully, this didn't lead to the American Nightmare taking any time away from WWE I TV. I did not know Number five, Rhea Res popped her knee back into place. I didn't know that. And even more reason why she was deserving to win a Royal Rumble and ultimately have one of the best matches of this year's WrestleMania. Man, that was a very good women's championship match between Rhea and Charlotte. I was not expecting it to be that good, but boy, oh boy, that's that's one match. They started off slow. I wasn't, you know, as highly interested. I just, you know, hoped that Rhea was the, the right person to win, and then they, the crescendo in that match was amazing. If you haven't seen it, go watch. It's one of the best women matches you will see for sure. WrestleMania 38. A WrestleMania 38 got off to a terrible start as Rick Boogs tore his quad. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most serious injuries a wrestler can suffer and thankfully Boogs was able to recover, but yeah. it certainly left a negative mark on WrestleMania's opening contest. Yeah. Another injury was suffered by AJ Styles who walked into the WrestleMania sign on the stage which gave him a yeah. deep laceration, yeah, led to fans wondering why that. AJ was bleeding before any physicality had even commenced. 
Bianca Belair suffered a black eye due to a botch sent yep. in the match with Becky Lynch. Ooh. And in the main event, it was believed that Roman Reigns was forced to put his shoulder back into place to safely finish his match with Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. A controversial injury also allegedly occurred to a fan and it led to an actual lawsuit. Oh, Marvin damn. Jackson filed a lawsuit against WWE on January 12, 2023, and he alleged that he lost hearing in his left ear at WrestleMania 38 in Dallas due to pyrotechnics. As things stand, there's no update in relation to the validity of Jackson's claims. I mean, the power, I mean, I don't know if he could win that case. It's not like, you know, he was, you know, just standing next to the power. I mean, that's just a risk, you know, like they're going to be some pyro. You know, it's going to get kind of loud at moments. So I don't know if he has any validity in that case. But, you know, I'm sure WWE have plenty of lawyers to kind of, you know, wave that away you know what i'm saying so i don't know about that one or new year's revolution 2005 the inaugural new year's revolution pay-per-view looked doomed to fail the opening match featured eugene teaming with william regal to take on christian and tyson <laughs> tomko during the match eugene would perform a standard drop kick on tomko and this was when eugene grabbed mm -hmm. his knee in anguish eugene had suffered a serious knee injury and would be on the shelf for six whole months the match was changed on the fly with Eugene performing a roll-up on Tomko mm -hmm. to win the match. But things went from bad to worse for WWE in the next match as another major injury occurred. Lita tore her ACL in a featured match with Trish Stratus which once again forced the wrestlers to call an audible and change the match finish. Yeesh. Luckily that was the end of the injuries at the event but this was certainly an unusual sight to see consecutive injuries on a WWE pay-per-view. Number 3 Over the Limit 2010 as pay-per-view featured some of the biggest names in WWE history, sadly the pay-per-view was truly cursed with injury after injury. The injuries began during the second match on the show when Ted DiBiase Jr. suffered a serious concussion during his match Whoa. with Our Truth. Then during the Rey Mysterio vs CM Punk matchup, Punk had suffered a deep cut which required 13 stitches to close. Damn. One of the biggest matches of the show, Randy Orton suffered a shoulder injury during his match yeah. with Edge. This forced the two WWE greats to change his match on the fly when and create a mat. new finish which would allow Orton to receive medical attention. Finally, in the last man standing match between Batista and John Cena, Batista suffered a back injury while Cena suffered a deep laceration and even lost a tooth. Damn. It was a busy night for WWE's medical heck? team. Know that? Number two. Oh, what the? <laughs> Yo, I did not know that. <laughs> and I watched that match too. That last man standing match. What? Oh, no, I think that was, uh, I believe they said that was the I Quit match. Yeah, the I, yeah. yeah I, I remember watching that. Damn. Bro, what the f man. It takes guts to be a wrestler, bro. The Great American Bash 2006. It takes a lot of guts. The WWE had their work cut out with the Great American Bash pay per view as a total of four matches had to be changed or cancelled. The Great Kali was supposed to collide with The Undertaker inside the Punjabi prison, but due to elevated enzymes in his liver, he was pulled from the pay-per-view. In his place would be The Big Show, which made for a better match, but there was no established story between The Dead Man and The Big Show, so the match suffered as a result. Yeah. Bobby Lashley was set to face Finlay in a US title match, but Lashley was pulled for the same reason as Kali, meaning Finlay was replaced by William Regal. Another match pulled from the show was Super Crazy set to challenge Gregory Helms for the Cruiserweight title. Super Crazy was pulled due to the enzyme issue and was replaced by Matt Hardy. Damn. Finally, Mark Henry was also scheduled to compete against Batista in a grudge match. However, he ruptured his patella tendon and dislocated his kneecap, Jeez. meaning he would be replaced by Mr. Kennedy. And number one, WrestleMania 36. Damn. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic greatly yeah. changed how WWE conducted their business. Due to the pandemic, WWE were forced to move their biggest show of the year, mm -hmm. WrestleMania 36, to the Performance Center. And what was crazy about this was that it was set to take place in front of zero no fans. fans. The pay-per-view was pre-recorded, meaning spoilers began to leak online, which didn't exactly make for compelling viewing. Yeah. In relation to the pay-per-view taking place in front of no fans, this was insanely awkward as a viewer, and it must have been incredibly frustrating for WWE talent we're getting set to perform in front of 80,000 plus people. If this wasn't bad enough for WWE, one of their biggest matches had to be cancelled as Roman yep. Reigns opted out of WrestleMania 36 due to safety mm -hmm. concerns. Reigns was eventually replaced by Braun Strowman who went one-on-one -on -one with Goldberg for the Universal title. 
was a bizarre show that seemed to suffer from endless setbacks. But WWE did the best they could with the pay-per-view. They did. Although it's hard to rewatch, the WrestleMania with zero fans in attendance is always going to be a talking point for decades to come. Yeah. Have it for Unfortunately, we, we, you know, ended up seeing the first ever WrestleMania with no fans. And it is crazy because it seems so long ago that we had to deal with that. Um... I, it, it, it it sucks. There were some good things that came out of it. That uh, the match with AJ Styles and The Undertaker, that was fantastic. That that match, that cinematic match was pretty pretty entertaining. I'm not going to lie to you. Even the, the Bray Wyatt and John Cena match, that was pretty entertaining as well. Um, what really just sucks is there were some moments that were had. The one, obviously, the obvious one is Drew McIntyre winning the championship beating brock lesnar it just sucks because the guy worked so hard to get to where he's at he became the guy and they went with him beating brock imagine the reception he would have got the reception he got when he eliminated brock you know and then the reception he got when he won the Royal Rumble. And then the reception he was getting when he kept attacking Brock weeks leading up to WrestleMania. Only to get to that moment. Actually win in decisive manner. And no fans be there, man. That sucks. That's And that's a lot of times that's the one thing I always wish. Drew can really get that moment that he deserves. That crowd popping moment where he becomes champ. That's what I've always, you know, since that moment, I've always wanted for him. And hopefully, maybe he can get that in the future. We'll see, man. But hey, comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys know about some of these injuries on some of these pay per views? Because a lot of them I didn't. But I appreciate all love and support. Roll to 150K. And I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one.